One of the most watched special elections in a long time is going to take place in New York on Tuesday. It is a congressional district that Biden won by double digits in 2020. Then it got redistricted. And a heretofore obscure gentleman named George Santos won the new district as a Republican in 2022 by nearly eight points. Now, after Santos' ignominious flameout and expulsion from Congress, well, they got to have a special election to replace him. And this election pits the guy who used to represent the old district in Congress, Tom Suozzi, who's a staunchly centrist Democrat, against a relative newcomer, Mozzie Pillup, who is a county legislator. Despite the fact that George Santos managed to escape vetting and get elected to the great embarrassment, really, of everyone, Pillup's financial disclosures in the race have raised questions, and she has not been particularly clear or detailed about, like, what, what her political positions are. Last night, at the only debate in this election, here's what she had to say when the candidates were asked about abortion. It is a personal decision, a personal choice. So Every woman should have that choice. I'm not going to tell her what to do. And I made it so clear. It's so personal to me. So you're you, pro-choice. Again, this is a personal choice. Every woman will well, make that decision. You have been lying, lying to the public. Now you have the opportunity to fix it. Go I'm, ahead. I'm asking you very clearly. Are you pro-choice? I made it again. It's a personal Just decision. Just say you're pro-choice. I, Mazi Philip, I am pro-life. This is me. Okay. <laughs> Marissa Cavis is an MSNBC columnist, author of the Handbasket newsletter, which I recommend. She's our go-to reporter on the George Santos scandals. She's been closely following the race to replace him. Marissa, welcome. Thank you. I, I mean, so here's my understanding of the dynamic here. That this is a district that's probably 65-35 pro, pro-choice, pro Roe v. Wade at least, right? Yes. Philip understands that. She, am I right? That, it seems like she is literally saying, I am pro-life and I am pro-choice as her position on abortion. Well, she just doesn't want to say the actual words, I am pro-choice, because that could haunt her forever in the Republican Party. And she is trying to skirt the line a little bit. And so she doesn't want that sound bite. But oh, <laughs> I see. I see. That's what it's about. It's about for her, her future. Yes. Oh, she she has aspirations. She she wants to go places, and this is her first stepping stone. Right. So she's doing this thing, which I, this is now the sort of cutting edge of Republican messaging. <laughs> I am pro-life, and every woman should get to choose if they have an abortion. Right? This is sort of what she's saying? Yes. She's a mother of seven, so she doesn't want to alienate religious voters or people with a lot of children. And so she's sort of like playing both sides. She's like, you can choose whatever you want to do. And she doesn't support a national abortion ban, she says. She says that. She says. She says. She says. I mean, we'll see. What the, one of the things that I think is the context here for why this race is going to be so heavily watched is that there's a very thin majority in a Republican Congress. Have you seen anything from her that would indicate that this is not a person who's basically going to end up empowering a Republican majority if that's how she's elected? I don't think she's going to be any sort of stalwart or any sort of, you know, uh, big change maker. She's not going to make a splash. I think she's going to go in there and just go along with the, the party line because that's what Santos did and that's what they need. And I'm sure she's been telegraphed that message. Um, this is an interesting district. Um, the latest polling had Swazi up by four, but I think everyone, I've talked to a lot of people in this district, they think it's like, they literally think it's going to be like 500 votes. They think it's like, I, multiple people said it's the closest race I've worked on. And one of the things that's been very striking to me is that the sort of migrant border issue is, is playing enormously in the district. Yeah, you would think that the district was on the Texas border based on how much they're talking about it. They did a candidate forum a couple of weeks ago on a local news station. And if I took a shot every time she said border, I would be dead by now. I mean, it was crazy. And um, it just seems like she's just hitting it, hitting it, hitting it and hoping that that's what sticks. It's sort of the, the tough on crime thing that we did in 2022 that that got a lot of Republican votes. And, and that brought us Santos sort of in that red wave. Is that it, it seems to me like there's been a little bit of a cross fade between I mean what you saw in New York was New York Republicans overperformed the national party they won five or six seats that people didn't necessarily expect it happened in the court, sort of New York post ambit I mean really like where the yeah. Murdoch empire was just flogging the crime issue it, is it still crime or has it been it seems to me like they've sort of switched from crime to migrants it's migrant crime Right. Oh, yes. The perfect. That's right. Yes. That's the perfect. Yeah. Right as you now. were talking about before, I mean, with this Curtis Lewa video and yeah. and trying to make it seem like these illegal criminals are overrunning our borders, that's the message that she's trying to get through. It's not that 
immigrants are bad. It's that these dangerous immigrants are bad. And, and she complained about a playground being near a migrant shelter in the district. It seems to me, too, she, I mean, Swazi is a sort of very known quantity. He represented the district. He left to go run and challenge Kathy Hochul for governor in the primary from her right. I mean, he was he was the conservative Democrat. He is a conservative Democrat for sure. Um, he's, I, you know, which is more in line with that district. They're not, that is not a district that's going to elect AOC. Um, I don't, I just don't get a sense. I've been, tr like, she doesn't do it a lot of events. Like, I just don't get a sense of what, what her politics are, really. Well, she's from Israel. And we're, during, we're in the midst of this very pivotal time about Israel. And I think it was a really cynical gambit by the local Republican Party who said, oh, we have an Israeli ex-soldier who could kind of just step up for the special election. We have no time to figure this out. And so they just thought voters would say, oh, Israel, yay, amazing. Let's, yeah, let's go for it. And obviously it's a very pro-Israel district in terms of the politics. Very of much so, but there's no daylight between her and Swazi on Israel. Right. And it seems like Swazi is also trying to make sure there's not much daylight on immigrants either. No. I mean, he's really like, he's sort of running on the right on those two topics.